Hello, Nerd King 101 here, and today we are doing a review slash discussion about Black Panther. I just want to talk about the movie for a while. I got some notes on my phone. So, first of all, I want to talk about what I liked about the movie. I thought the acting was actually really good. I know some people have been saying it's kind of choppy. I think that's ridiculous. I think the acting looked really good all throughout the film. I think there were a couple dialogue choices by the people writing the dialogue that were very iffy. My most famous one being, oh, by the way, there was spoilers. But uh, I feel the most famous one was the Wakanda Forever. No. It sounds incredibly cheesy. It's stupid. It's overdone. The way, oh my god, there, there, if any of the movie there's a scene where uh, Killmonger is holding a girl like this and has a knife to her neck, and she goes, Wakanda forever, as he slits her throat. And I'm just like, really? You could have made this, you could have had her say something like, I'd rather die than betray Wakanda and have her get her throat split. But no, she just like, Wakanda forever. It sounds ridiculous, it sounds cheesy, and it doesn't sound good. Okay, that brings me up to another thing about the movie I want to talk about. Not necessarily good, not necessarily bad. There is a lot of violence and death in this movie. <laughs> like, for an MCU movie where we were complaining about people not dying, it's like, if you ever think Guardians 2, it's Volume 2, it looks like the people that were complaining about the people that were complaining about the empty you not having enough death. Kevin Feige was like, hold my beer. Kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him, just don't kill the main character. I mean, somebody died in like the first couple seconds of the movie and there's a lot of stabbing death. Not so much like the off there's a lot of like stabbing in this movie. Not so much as the laser blast, bullet to the back, cut away, quicksilver. A lot of like, there's a scene in the beginning of the movie where T'Challa or Black Panther is fighting somebody without his Black Panther power, and he just gets stabbed right here, and you just see them shove that spirit, and I'm just like, oh god, no. Like, only because I didn't expect it. If it wasn't like Deadpool, I would have been fully prepared. I'm sitting here, I'm like, this is a Marvel movie? The guy getting like a, like a sword twisted around in his chest. So that caught me very off guard. Uh, not that it bothered me, I, I liked how people died. I liked how it wasn't like in Legend of Korra, where they blow up a plane, but they make sure to animate the people parachuting out of the plane. They're like, no, people die in life. <laughs> when people are alive, they die. People die when they are killed, if you will. <laughs> the quote of famous meme, anime meme. No, but that uh, bothered me. The acting, the dialogue bothered me. And uh, there wasn't much else, but uh, what I didn't like was at the beginning, I, I don't quite know how to word this. I didn't know how to word this on Twitter, and I don't know how to word this in general, but the first, I would say, 45 minutes, everything from the beginning to when he, to around when, uh, climb, Ulysses Claw, to when Ulysses Claw killed up. Everything until then seems like it's very much going through the motion. It feels like it doesn't feel it's not bad. It almost it's weird. It feels like this is a superhero origin movie. It isn't. It feels like Black Panther needed an origin movie. I know a lot of people don't like origin, but with the way it was it was just like 45 minutes of just getting to know these characters. And I'm like, at this point, why not to give Black Panther an origin movie? Like, I get it, Civil War was technically an origin movie, but why not just make a whole movie about this? I mean, it felt very like we were just going through the motion. 
Like, he had to fight. He had to become king. Anybody who stepped forward can oppose him. And I know some of it comes up later in the movie, but it's still kind of meh, in my opinion. I didn't like that. Um, his sister, whose name was... I'm really bad with the name in this movie. Shuri? His sister's name was Shuri, I believe. Please, if I pronounce these names wrong, I am sorry. I, I do, I'm not great at, at these names, and if I'm pronouncing them wrong, I am terribly sorry. But Shiri was great. I love this girl from the introduction. To get introduced, she starts mocking the, her brother, who's about to become king. And as she walks away, she gets him a finger. But it's so teenager, because she does it, and, her, and she's like, sorry, Mom. It, it, it was really good. I really liked her. I really liked how they had his sister be the tech person, so he wasn't very much like Iron Man. I know a common worry about the movie was that it was going to be African American Iron Man, and my god, it was not. In the beginning of the movie, he had the mini character arc because he, he doesn't want Wakanda to help people. He just wants to stay isolated, but at the end of the movie, he's like, to hell with that. We're helping people. I really liked that. Um, Ulysses Claw wasn't the main villain, but he was so much fun. He was just so crazy. His laugh, I saw, the, I saw Nick with nearly a full theater, and you, whenever this guy was on screen, people were laughing. He was just so evil and batshit insane. It was wonderful. I love this guy. Oh my god, I love this guy so much. He, he was great. And then Killmonger was the best villain in the MCU. And your hero here was the villain good. The MC movie, MCU movies are known for having bad villains. Yeah. And this guy was great. I loved it. I loved this guy. He was great. The fact that his whole goal was to take over Wakanda so he could help people in need, African Americans specifically, that were in need was great. His whole point was that Wakanda could help, mind you, could help the people around the world that are being oppressed. He even indirectly brings up slavery once when he mentions his ancestors and his brothers and sisters that were held in bondage. And then he looked and he said, well, my brothers and sisters were slaves. Where was Wakanda? Well, people like us of our race were slaves. Where was Wakanda? And I think it's a great because it's not like he's evil. He's actually, in a, in a way, has a point. Now, his idea of giving t giving weapons of mass destruction to 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 oppress people all over the world and saying murder your leaders and take over by force was evil and horrible. The solution is never to commit mass genocide and kill people that don't agree with you. That's never, never the answer. But it was just so good. I loved this movie. I think there are three things holding it back from being the best MCU movie of the year. Like, flat out, I think, I think, it did, I think it didn't come out last year, it would be my favorite MCU movie. Actually, no, Spider-Man. And then it come out in 2015, it would have been my favorite MCU movie that year. The problem, I think, no, Civil War. Okay, the point is, this has potential to be the second or first best MCU, MCU movie of a, of a year. The problem is that it's the first movie coming out immediately followed by Avengers Infinity War and Ant-Man and the Wasp, both of which have previously established hype. Everybody wants to see Avengers Infinity War, which I will be doing a video about that at some point. I don't know when I'll be doing the stream for that. Probably when I have more subscribers. I mentioned that on my old channel when I started this one. I'll be doing an MCU stream in like a week. If, you know, if we can get, how is it? If we can get this video to 15 likes and 50 views, I will do the MCU stream. But if we can get up to like 10 or 15 subscribers from this video, I will do it. But, okay. What else do I want to talk about? I talked about Yoshi Claw. He was great. That little hand he had was awesome. 
Um, I talked to this on Twitter during my uh, live, my reaction when I left the theater. Uh, I liked how the technology was done. I was very concerned that they wouldn't be able to make Wakanda look more advanced than, say, something Iron Man would build. They did it. They had, like, hover card. It was especially because everybody had it. In Iron Man, a lot of the stuff is just Tony Stark's tech. In this, you're know, like, hover... Hover bikes. I know the CIA, the CIA agent guy, who by the way, he was great. Because he was kind of like the audience. Like they fit it back, and he just like, you fit my back, what, what, how, what, you can't just, no, I, I can't have it out of there, that's ridiculous. So he was kind of like the audience of calling out the ridiculousness of what they did with vibranium, I liked that. I'm gonna look at my notes, uh, Killmonger, I, li I like the Shuri. Shuri, I think her name was, my sister, my sister. I loved her tech. I loved the uh, suit, which I'm assuming maybe Iron Man suit will use something similar. I'm gonna have a drink here. Maybe Iron Man suit, the one in Avengers Infinity War, the one we saw in the trailer, where you put it on the glasses and you see the armor crawling up again. Maybe it uses similar technology to that. Yeah, the way that works is, it, is he wears a beaded necklace around his neck and it comes up. That was great. One thing I didn't like was giving the other guy Black Panther armor that felt a little too similar to Iron Man 1, which ended in with, with entering one being the better version of the other. I mean, very different things. I just, I just, I, I honestly kind of wish they hadn't had the armor. But I understand they wanted to show T'Challa and all his glory and his armor and on all the promotional material. I feel like it would have been better if he wasn't. I mean, Black Panther is still Black Panther out his armor. It wouldn't be like Iron Man 3 where it's like, well, he's not Iron Man without the armor, which he isn't. I guess that, that was a really bad movie. I don't feel like it would have degraded the quality of the fight at all if they did that. I would also like to say the special effects at times time did seem like a bit of a step down for previous MCU films. That was slightly disappointing. I felt like those could have been better. Um, also, I wish they could have had some stupid explanation like an Ant-Man for why the Avengers weren't called. You would think when a country were getting ready to commit a mass, essentially a mass terrorist attack, you would think a member of the CIA would be like, why don't we call up that Iron Man guy who leads the team of superheroes that work with the government? Remember, the Avengers work with the government. The CIA could just be like, hey, Tony, yeah, we got the country of Wakanda. We need your help saving it. Iron Man would be like, yeah, sure thing, I'll be there in a minute. Like, I'm not saying I'm Iron Man in the movie, I'm saying has some stupid explanation, like, I don't know, have somebody say, uh, we, 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 why don't we have, like, the CIA agent be like, why don't we call the Avengers and have them be like, because, because the shield around Wakanda damping communicate, make communication with the outside world take longer. Or none of the technology you have for contacting Iron Man would work here. Or maybe even have somebody turn on him and like, call the Avenger. He could be like, I don't have that kind of clearance. It would take five hours for me to get my hands on communication with Iron Man. Something to explain why they're not there. And, and Ant-Man, they're like, why would we call the Avenger? We're stealing things. We're literally breaking the law. Like, it made in that situation. So that I didn't like. I I thought it was a problem with the movie. In, how, in Homecoming, it made sense. Once again, because the bolster was the nobody. He wasn't on Iron Man's radar. And overall, everything made sense. This did not make sense. There was no reason all of this, oh, this, this whole thing should have gotten under the nose of Iron Man. You would think a giant war, a giant, like, almost, almost alien-looking spaceship blowing up other spaceships in the middle of Africa. You would think somebody at, Aven at the Avengers complex would have been like, I don't think that's supposed to happen. 
Hey, Iron Man, Tony, did we go in there and do something? But no, but uh, I'll talk about the end credit things at the end of the video, by the way, thinking of the Avengers. Um, what else? What else is there to say about this movie? Um, I loved, I, one of my favorite pieces of technology beside the suit thing was, so there was this piece of technology Shuri invented, I think that's her name, invented, where you would get in a holographic cockpit and it would act as an actual pilot. An actual cockpit for a vehicle. So you would be able to look out and you could see out of like cameras from a vehicle, so you could look behind you and you would see what was behind the vehicle. So the vehicle could be like halfway across the country or halfway across the planet. And it was so cool. I also loved the way the combat ritual fight worked. How they were how they can remove the powers of the Black Panther. I did not like how they were like tossed around. I wasn't a fan of the concept of tossing around the powers like that. But now he's the only one with them. I like how by the end of the movie all the other plants are burned. And it's like nobody else but me in Black Panther. I liked that. That was great. Once again, the ritual fight, how they were human versus human was good. It allowed T'Challa to be the hero of his movie. One of the problems with Iron Man 3 is that people don't like it. Tony Stark is the hero of that movie, not Iron Man. It's Tony Stark, a man without the armor to save the day in that movie. And in this movie, it's the same thing. He does eventually end up needing the powers, but it shows that T'Challa is really awesome even without them. He kicks a whole lot of that. I liked that. Once again, in the beginning, felt a little bit like it was going through the motions. I didn't like that. Uh, the dialogue was strange at times. Uh, as for, uh, as for the African American rep representation, I can't speak on it as an 18 year old white man. But I heard no complaints about it. There are no people going, is it, is it F day, F day. SJW propaganda. It's not like Star Wars. It's just trying to be a good movie. And I will respect it for that. They're not trying to push any political message. And I'm not saying any movie recently have. I know The Last Jedi, which I did not see. I don't like Star Wars. Got a lot of flack for being that. I, well, I don't know if that's true. All I know is it got flack for it. The point I'm trying to make is that this movie is just a movie that is really, really good with an almost entirely African-American cast that just happened to be African-American. Like, it's just, it is no different from an Iron Man movie or a Spider-Man movie, and I love that. There is almost no emphasis put on their race in a big regard. Yes, the villain talked about it, but that is the villain's motivation, is the past thing, and it's, it's how African Americans have been treated in the past, is the way minorities are being treated. That's his motivation, and it works. I actually somewhat agree with the villain, but the problem is that the villain went about it the wrong way. It's very much a situation where the villain was right, but he went about it the wrong way. Because you should go about it the way, the way, that, the way to Chava is going about it. Go there, have fun, and help people. But do it the right way. Use all that money and wealth of Wakanda to do it. The problem is that these people, these people, people like this, these extremists, are like, you're killing everybody. Killing is never the answer, and I love that. I also loved how T'Challa took Killmonger to see the sunset, like his dad promised he would get to see, and he died seeing the beautiful sunset of Wakanda. I thought that was beautiful. I like that was just, the entire story with Killmonger is great. I'm not going to go into great detail about it, but that entire backstory is so real world. You could easily have messed that up. Young boy becomes a villain after finding his dead father. That's literally the, uh, just Batman origin minus the dead mother 
and minus becoming a good guy. Then you could have made that so generic, but it just felt so human. It felt so real world. It was so good. I liked it. Honestly, after, as I said before, talking about the villain, I would give Killmonger the place as my second favorite Marvel villain. My first is, uh, this is pr probably my first, if I'm being honest. I, there's a large part of me that just wants to say Thanos. Just because Thanos. And he's so good. So I asked for the after credits thing. Uh, how long have we been going? Wow, wow, wow. But, uh, after the after credits thing. So, Thanos, not Thanos. Uh, T'Challa comes down in the first one. That more is a, wa a wrap up. Is uh, him speaking up in the UN about how Wakanda is going to help people. And some guy, some other guy, some other ambassador or whatever, going, Aren't you a ton of farmers? <laughs> Which is isn't hilarious because Wakanda is obviously this like actual paradise city. Oh, by the way, Wakanda visually looked great. All the set design in this mu movie was spectacular. But, my point is, is that this movie was very good, but it did have flaws, but so the, after the end credit thing, let's get back to those. This is another scattered review, I know, I'm not really a, a movie reviewer. I'm not, I'm not great at reviewing really long things, as you can tell. I'm going to talk about it. But, uh... It was really good. The actor, the actor credit thing showed him, you know, talking about how what kind of we're gonna help people. Somebody cracking a joke. It was fine. It was a little annoying to have to wait for that. I will say, I feel like it would have, should have been in the movie and not an end credit scene because it was part of the core narrative of the damn film. And after the next thing, this one confused me. We saw Bucky. Yeah, the Winter Soldier. So, maybe, I guess they will get a plane in Infinity War, but I thought Bucky was on ice. Big, so, apparently, they figured out how to undo the programming. This is a big deal. The programming done by Hydra, I believe, had been removed. Bucky it seems to be. He seems to be quite happy. It's good. We didn't see Cap. I don't know where Cap is. I'm assuming he, last time we saw him, he was in Wakanda. I was actually kind of hoping we would see him in this movie, but we didn't. The whole movie, I was kind of wondering where are Buck and Cap? Where are they? Like Cap would help. Not the thing. There was no mention of the Infinity Stone, which I found weird because everybody was like, "Does so it Wakanda clearly have the last Infinity Stone based on the trailer for Avengers: Infinity War?" Don't they? I think they do. Am I wrong? Do they not have it? If so, why is there an army at Wakanda in the Avengers Infinity War trailer? And where the hell is that Infinity Stone? We're on to the last one, and I would have kind of liked to get some kind of update on it. Because honestly, I don't want the Infinity War to just be the battle for an Infinity Stone. That bothered me. It did. I want to, like... And now we're gonna have this whole movie where the child is gonna come out of that movie like, oh yeah, we have an infinity stone. Why didn't you use it? Do you not know what it is? You, without a fan, Wakanda is, they must have an idea of what the infinity stone is. Somebody has to. And that's the something I've been wondering. Ha, nobody on Earth knows who Thanos is. Are, are they going to get the whole of, of Infinity War just going, yeah, we have no idea what's going on, buddies? Who's going to explain to them what the Infinity Gauntlet is, all the lore behind it? Who's going to do all that? What I was thinking was going to happen was in this movie, we were going to get a ton of explanation. We were going to get the Infinity Stones in-depth explained. Again, they were explained in Guardians, but we'll have somebody on Earth knowing the origin, Black Panther or T'Challa. And then, we would have it be revealed that they had an Infinity Stone, but didn't know how to use it. So then, that would set up the attack on Wakanda for Infinity War. They didn't do that, which confused the hell out of me. But, um, yeah. That's really all I have to say. Did you want me to talk more about the Marvel movie? 
Tell me in the comments down below. Tell me what you thought of the movie in the comments as well. Well, well, guys, have a nice day. This is Nerd King 101 signing out. Bye!